All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, so I'm going to go talk today about composite controls or custom controls with Power Apps. Uh, so the platform by default gives you some basic controls to build applications. Uh, but there's a lot you can do as an app maker uh, without having to dip into code to build even more complex controls. So today I'm going to try to build three controls uh, from scratch uh, and see how, how, how that's been achieved uh, with Power Apps. Uh, before I do that, I want to just show an example of a real life, a real application here. This is one of the HR apps that was uh, shipped uh, not too long ago. Uh, you can see here that out of the box we have some basic controls like uh, a gallery control, uh, regular labels, buttons, and things like that. But the, the team who built this went beyond that. They, they created a loader experience. That's not a control that you have out of the box with Power Apps. Uh, they did some sort of a notification uh, control here, dot, uh, dialog box you can see here. You can see also the gallery control uh, is really customized for, uh, to have a very different experience. Uh, so with Power Apps, you, can, you, you have some basic tools uh, at your disposal to go much beyond what the platform gives you out of the box. So we're going to see today how we could do some of, the, some of that. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the gallery pattern, patterns. Uh, so there's a lot of controls that you can build out of a simple gallery control. The current control that we have with Power Apps is very versatile. It gives you a lot of properties to change the layout. You could do a wrap count. You could, uh, you could change the type of layouts that you have to be horizontal, vertical. You could nest gallery controls. So these are just a couple of examples, few examples of actual control that you can build with the platform, even though you don't have that out of the box. And it's very easy to build controls on top of very basic controls. Uh, so here again, uh, I'm going to try to build uh, a rating control as one of the examples. But, uh, uh, the, but yeah, so this is, uh, this is one example of a gallery. So I'm going to get started actually in building first a numeric up and down. So we don't have this control out of the box. So I'm going to switch the, to the studio here real quick. And as you can see here, the controls that we have at our disposal are limited to drop down combo box. Date picker, checkbox, we don't have a numeric up and down. So we're going to try. Uh, let me, uh, we're going to try uh, to build a numeric up and down as we saw. So those are just the limited controls that we have today in our disposal. So for that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a, a regular text input. So I already dropped it here just to save some time. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit uh, so that we have a better visual of what we're doing. And I'm going to zoom in and out. Uh, so I'm starting off with a t text input. I'm going to call this uh, numeric up and down input text, just uh, for clarity. Put text box, text. And then I'm going to drop in uh, an icon here for, uh, uh, for, uh, for, the, for one of my buttons. I'm going to go the uh, up button here. Or actually, let me do the down button right here as well. And I'm going to do a little bit of styling. I'm going to bring this a little bit around here. I'm going to get some padding going. I'm going to do some formatting. And it's going to go dark, maybe even darker than that. And I'm going to do some fill. So I'm placing this control right here. Uh, I am interested in having maybe uh, it exactly be uh, half of the width of this, uh, of the height of this control. So I'm going to go to the height property of this control and link that to uh, my not input text dot height. And that gives me really the exact height I want. I still need to kind of uh, make sure that it's always uh, positioned at the right location. So that's going to be the same location as the input text dot y. Uh, but uh, that needs to be kind of, uh, actually this is, uh, sorry about that, so the Y position here of this control should be, should be, ref should be relative to the actual uh, position of, the, uh, of the, the input text plus uh, the height of the text box here divided by 2. So that's give us this, this uh, positioning right here so that if we actually end up increasing, uh, moving the control or even doing something like that, we'll, we'll lay out in the right position. 
So that's one thing. So I'm going to just change a little bit the positioning of this guy and bring it a bit here. And I take this control. It's the same concept that I, uh, I, just, uh, I just don't want to redo the styling again. So I'm going to bring in the if. Bring it here. And let's uh, bring it back right here. So UI-wise, we, we are almost getting there. So we need now to kind of uh, create some logic. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to justify this to write so that we have the text, the, the values that we're going to be inputting here at this location. The other thing I, I need to do is uh, make sure that we use the formatting uh, of uh, numbers here so that we only allow uh, numbers for this control. Uh, and then the, the logic for this is actually pretty simple. So we're going to do an update context. We're going to take a, a value, say, not values, uh, something like that, which is numeric up and down value is equal to not value plus 1. And then the same thing we're going to do for the button here. On the on select of this, but of this button, we're going to do a, a decrement here. So it's still going to just increment that number, but uh, again, we need to bind that value that we just created to the, to the default of this text box. So again, the value we just implemented is going to be just this night not value right here. So, and uh, that's it. So we have a, a quick, a easy numeric and pan down implementation. Uh, one thing that helps a little bit is grouping this. So I'm going to group this into its own control. So, and that's numeric up and down. So again, it's a simple example of, uh, like it took about two minutes to build the numeric up and down. I think if you were to do this in any other platform, you might have more elegant coding, more, uh, you know, more sophisticated kind of encapsulation. Uh, but at the very least, you were able to do here on Power Apps in just under a minute, a numeric up and down. That's something that, you know, a citizen developer can actually wrap ar uh, their head around doing that. Of course, you can make this more complex can have a min and max, things like that. So, so again, simple example. You can now copy paste this into your uh, other uh, screens and uh, applications. So, so the next example I want to build is a, as a is a rating control. Uh, so for that, I have. Uh, let me bring this down so it doesn't um, reorder this. Uh, set it back. I have some uh, pre cooked. Uh, controls that I dropped. It's a simple image control here. I'm going to call it heart um, background, let's say. And I'm going to bind this to, a, to an image that I have uh, already uh, pre-populated pre here. So it's this rate. You can see it in the contrast here, but it's basically just the frame of our rating control. So I'm going to do that. So rating right here. I apologize about the contrast there, but uh, what you're going to see here in a second that, uh, that uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to drag a rectangle, and I'm just going to place this rectangle just behind this rating control. Again, we have a rating control with Power Apps. We have a simple, uh, simple control here that's called rating. But you might be interested in different layout. You might be interested in half a star rating. You might have a different spin on what a rating control is. So what I'm building right now is a, is a different implementation of that, but it's one that gives you a bit more flexibility in terms of the layout and look and feel. So uh, again, I placed my rectangle here. I'm going to call this rectangle uh, maybe a uh, uh, rating value. And the idea is to find a way to kind of uh, start sliding this uh, at the right position, depending on the user interaction. So one control that can do the trick is uh, a slider control. So I'm going to add this slider control. I'm going to bring it a little bit down here. I'm going to lay it out uh, and something around those lines. Uh, so I'm, uh, I'm going to set the uh, min, or I guess the max, uh, to 5, if I'm interested in a 5 stars uh, method here. And I'm going to use the, the rectangle value here and bind the width of this to be dependent on, on this slider. So for that, I'm going to take, uh, first of all, I, uh, in order for me to do an incremental, I need to kind of uh, find out what that width is for every heart we have. 
So it's going to be a rating. Uh, so heart background dot width divided by uh, five, which is the number of stars we have. So that gives you one one star. And then you gotta multiply this by by the slider value. And again, the slider value goes between one and five. So this should should now highlight all of the uh, all of the all of the hearts that you have. So if I go do something like that, you know, you can see that really quickly you you have a heart control. So one more thing here is that uh, if I was interested in having less hard coding stuff, I can go back to, hard, uh, to my equation here. Instead of having a 5 here, I can do just slider value dot max, which is 5 in this case. Uh, and nothing will change right now. It's, it's going to be fine. It's going to be an incremental of 1. But I could go ahead and actually change the max of my slider to be 10. And all of a sudden, I, I will be implementing a half star rating. So something that your control here wouldn't be, uh, is not customized to do right here. So the last thing I need to do is get rid really of this slider. I, I want to be able to interact on this with, the, with the actual heart control. So an easy way for us to do that is to uh, overlay the, the slider control on top of the heart control, uh, and then uh, go ahead and set some uh, transparency on the handles, uh, on, the, uh, on the field control, uh, and then also on the rating. So at this point, I have a control that should act really exactly naturally how you, you would want it. Again, you would, uh, you would group this. Uh, uh, let me uh, just group that. Actually, I don't need this one, so let me delete that. Oops. Stay. Anyway, so this, this, and this. I'm going to group that into its own control. I'm going to control that uh, rating control. So the platform is actually working on a lot more infrastructure to allow you to do custom controls, things that you can wrap this control, reuse around, uh, so uh, kind of building your own library. So those are all things that are on the, on the works. Uh, so things that will allow you to kind of better distribute those packages around applications and things like that. So those controls around application. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring this group, uh, I'm going to bring this down. Uh, Again, to, so that I can focus on my last control. Uh, let me set the set the hand back. So, and I have right now, I'm going to delete this guy. I don't know why this is uh, stay. Um, let me bring this actually also back. And then uh, let me move it around so it doesn't bother us. And then uh, let's take this uh, image control here. What I'm interested in building right now is a gauge control. So basically, uh, I'm, I'm going to be building something as complex as this. Uh, and I'm hopefully going to do it in a couple of minutes. Uh, again, I'm convinced that if you try to do it in HTML or any other languages or natively, you, you will have to spend a bit more time on doing this. So I'm going to try to do this in one minute or a few minutes. <coughs> so the first thing, I, uh, I pre-populated a, a gauge control. So I'm going to do that. So I'm interested right now in, uh, uh, in having an indicator that's going to move depending on some sort of input. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use for that an HTML control right now. And I'm going to overlay this HTML control over, over, over this. So I have here a simple, uh, simple HTML language here. So this is a developer conference. So I went for an HTML. Uh, you could do achieve this in many ways. But basically, what you're seeing here is a, just a, an image of an indicator control uh, with, with, one little, uh, with one little CSS uh, property, which is rotate. Uh, we're going to make use of that by injecting our own control values from Power Apps into this, into this equation, into this uh, formula. So I'm going to copy paste this. And I'm going to bring it to the HTML text right here. And you can see here that I got my gauge right uh, where I needed it. So again, it's a simple image wrapped into a div element. And I'm, gonna, I'm interested in actually uh, driving the value of the slider right here by a slider or by a numeric pen down. So I could hook my uh, numeric pen down since we built this control. Let's try to wire up that with the gauge control right here. So the, to do that, uh, we can just simply do uh, an expression to, uh, to concatenate strings. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to 
get rid of my zero, and uh, the value here can be the value of the numeric text dot value dot text, I guess. And then at this point, if I uh, if I uh, if I actually uh, go into here, and uh, let me um, this. Uh, you can see that uh, you can see that uh, I can actually drive my uh, numeric up and down. Of course, I could have ha hooked the same thing with a slider. Slider makes it a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to do a slider here. And I'm going to take the, uh, again, I'm going to go to my HTML text. And I'm going to take the value of my slider. dot value, and then again, you, you will be able to, to, to drive this with a, with a slider. So of course, uh, again, this is the second time I show an example. There is a lot you could do with a slider today. Uh, there is a lot you could do with a gallery control. Uh, in this particular case, with the gauge control, you're probably very likely to, uh, uh, to have some sort of data input that's coming from some sort of service. Uh, I, I, I attempted to do that with, uh, with a simple uh, uh, applauseometer. So basically, it gives you the ability to uh, hook up your uh, simple control here to a, uh, to, a, to a data source. So I have a sound API. And what I'm doing here is I'm using the microphone natively that's uh, part of the control, the power apps uh, set of controls that you have at your disposal. I'm recording a sound. I'm sending it back to the back end. I'm doing an anal analysis of the sound, see how loud it is, and then getting back the value that I'm going to drive my Goge control over there. So we could do a test. I'm not sure it's going to work in this uh, loud environment, but uh, if you guys want to applause, uh, this is your time. <laughs> so. Hope it works. I don't know if uh, it's going to be sounding. All right, see. And the connection is a little bit slow. This is supposed to be a little bit faster, but. Ah, good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, that's it. That's all I have. Uh, there's a lot to do. Uh, there's a lot of uh, resources out there. I want to just uh, point out a few more things. Uh, we, have, we have a set of blogs in our uh, Power Apps uh, blogs uh, that talks about UX controls, UX sliders. Uh, all sorts of uh, custom controls that you might uh, want to use for your app. So I rarely, I rarely find controls I can't do with Power Apps, even with the native controls uh, that we have, with the basic controls we have. With a and that's, for me, the most exciting part of Power Apps, is that you get to be creative in how you assemble the basic controls to build something more complex. So, and uh, we have seen, uh, I'm part of the customer success team, so we see a lot of very, very creative use of the controls that we have in Power Apps to build very stunning, actually good looking apps that would be hard to even distinguish from any uh, you know, native apps that you would have. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much.